LaSalle's UAAP campaign preview indeed seemed to require leaps of faith as the crowd cheered on lustily even while the Green Archers limped through the first round of eliminations. We'll go for that spin. Joseph go for the three, gets it to go! In the exciting season opener, De La Salle's five squandered a 15-point third-quarter lead to lose its first match to arch-rival Atene. Nine seconds remaining in the shot clock. Bugia, hard drive, and the lead goes to the Blue Eagles. Menorio sees daylight. The Salle is just completely outplayed here by Atene. So began the wild ride. Back-to-back -back victories catapulted La Salians to ecstasy. Goes to be right back. Oh, the lane! Goes back. Oh, how did he go through that? Lucas is as good as mine. Only to be brought down by another loss. Double dribble has been whistled against Gaffer. Absolutely, as Cardona tries to break up the interior, he is rejected. Downstairs to Bono. Bono with 14 on the shot clock. Oh! Oh, yes! And Adamson wins it! Tasho from the corner, he loves that spot, and he sends that baby home. to the play. Oh, yo, eluding everybody on the fourth and final quarter. Yo, shrugs aside Almeda, steps into traffic, gets the lead for the side. On the very first line of the ball game. Six seconds, five, four, the win with a move, rejected by Kabatu. Rejected by Juju Kabatu. Big, big defensive play by Kabatu. Yo, grinding hard downstairs for Hopper under the basket. Oh, no. But Bongo take it, catch it, and score. La Sala to time out there. They rush it. Yo, no. And look at this. UE has won against De La Salle. A duplicate pattern found DLSU in a triple tie at third place at the end of the first round, behind runner-up FEU Tamaraos and the peerless Ateneo Blue Eagles, which had a flawless seven-win run despite losing King Eagle Larry Polachier to injury. It was a bitter pill to swallow, a harsh prelude to the season's biggest turnaround. trouble with a loss to the defending champions at the top of the second round. The ball likes Quesada. Quesada goes all the way. Quesada likes scoring. I question. Mayor Hopo with a beautiful stretch. For spread. De La Salle got back at Atene. After downing the Bulldogs and the Blue Eagles, the France Pumarin system kicked in. It was open season for the Archers, as they next set upon the USD Growling Tigers and the Adamson Falcons. Even the raging run of the UP Fighting Maroons ground to a halt in the face of the Green Archers' resolute climb. And blood ties could not save the UE Warriors from the Archers' wrath. It was a mad 6 to nothing race. When the dust settled, De La Salle had 10 wins against 4 losses the exact same tally brandished by the beleaguered Ateneo squad. Realization hit like a splash of sub-zero water. Life and death hung on a virtual best of three against the very team that ended La Salle's championship dreams two years in a row. Old wounds reopened. The ultimate test of survival loomed like a dark cloud over everyone's heads. The paths of the Green Archers and Blue Eagles diverged early in the season. Since the two teams first clashed, De La Salle rode crests and trove of the big wave while Ateneo soared. Towards the end of the journey, the Archers found a talisman that brought them straight to the Final Four, save for one stumbling block, their nemesis, their paths. And once more, Tied at second place, 
Ateneo and De La Salle had to face each other in a knockout game to decide which one gets the twice to beat edge in the next level. The team that wins twice in a row first gains entry to the finals. Considering the protagonists, the stakes skyrocketed and the heat of the contest claimed some valuable victims. technical foul against JC and to add visitors into the woes of Ateneo. So no more JC and Cal from here on up to the end of the ball game for Ateneo. But the archers had control from jump ball to final buzzer. Chalk up round one for LaSalle. The actual final four began. Number one FEU readily disposed of number four UE days before in the first pairing. And the Tamaraos were resting with one eye fixed on this critical clash. The Green Archers supposedly had the upper hand with momentum on their side. And Mac Daddy Cardona won't let the enemy forget. Against the rest of Ateneo! Oh, it up and in! However, the stun blitz failed to convince the Blue Eagles to lay down and die as the lead shifted from one team to the other until the Green Archers' vaunted defense shattered the standoff in the pivotal third quarter. The book was written before time. Baskets went in against the odds. On the team's eighth straight win, LaSalle has returned to the final scene. Go back to the finals. Lines up the three. Get Jeff to go! And he points to the Ateneo side of things. Cardona, two steps ahead, talks to Tenorio and gets it up and in. <laughs> Ty Tang goes to the other side. Yes. Get that
Eagles. It's been a tradition for this team that was halted last year after making it five straight years from 1998 to the year 2002. They don't want that to happen again. And a win today will bring them back to the finals this year. But it's a totally different feeling on the other side of the Big Dome. For the Blue Eagles, there is a feeling of anxiety, uncertainty, and a feeling of desperation. The Blue Eagles have the odds stacked up against them. Today, they are in a fight for survival. They will try to keep their heads above water with a win today. Ateneo really needs one big fight. Maybe one last fight. All roads lead to the Big Dome, the Araneta Coliseum, for the main event of your Sunday showdown. It's happening for the fourth straight time, but it will kick off the final four matchup between the Ateneo Blue Eagles and the De La Saw Green Archers. Good afternoon, Philippines. You're watching us live over Studio 23 alongside DJ Manotok. My name is Boom Gonzalez, and DJ, I'll go straight into this. Coach Franz Pumarin has been here, he has done everything, uh -huh. he knows that he has to close out Ateneo today. Exactly, of course, Coach Franz Pumarin knows very well the most recent team that has ever come back from a twice to be at disadvantage is in the 2002 season when Ateneo beat UE, eventually went to the finals and beat the Sal. So it's in the very recent memory that this team has the men who were there, who are yeah. able to do that, and Coach Franz is very much aware of that and he wants to finish it all today. You know, De La Salle University is riding high on a seven-day winning streak, including that win on playoff Tuesday, which decided who will be at number two on Final Four. And speaking of that game, you saw that on TV, DJ. You watched it. You saw what happened. Exactly. De La Salle really practically dismantled the Blue Eagles. If you want to be scientific, they dissected them. 82-69 was the final score, but look at how the stats went. Bench scoring, total domination, 42-21. Points inside the paint, another domination, 52 to 34. Fast break points, which is something the Eagles used to be the best at in the yes. league. It was 14 to 7. Ateneo no longer at the top of the heap in fast break points. Now it's Lasalle. Turnovers was very ugly for Ateneo. Lasalle's defense forced them to 19 turnovers, consequently giving the Green Archers 21 easy turnover points. In season 67, the Ateneo Blue Eagles, for the very first time this year, DJ lost back-to-back. -back. And a lot of people are pointing at a lot of different things, but one very glaring in the loss, in the back-to-back -back loss that they had, was the absence of JC Intal, absence in terms of his play. Absolutely, JC Intal, the baby rocket, has been the main man for them since Larry Punasher left and was injured. He was been averaging almost 12 points a ball game during the eliminations, but in those last two games, he only shot 30% from the field, poorly shot his free throws, only six points a ball game because of everybody knows he was under the weather in the first time around against SCU. He had the last game against Asali had a high fever, so good news though for the uh, Atenea fans today. JC and Tal apparently very healthy, but the problem is, man, how apparently it's under the flu. All right, we'll deal with that a little later on. In the meantime, let's shift our attention to the De La Salle Green Archers. As I mentioned, seven games straight. Six of those games came in the second round, and it's they pointed to the, you know, good friends Pumarin is a genius here in the second round. Mac Cardona and Joseph Yo playing beautiful music together, if I may say so, together. I agree 100%, and this is one of the key factors, if not the main factor, why La Salle made their big run here in the second round. Coach Franz Fumarin's decision and risk to change up his rotation. Starts with Macardona, substitutes with Joseph Dio. Look at the minutes he gives these two. Only 25, only 20 minutes. Put these two guys in any other team, they'd easily get 30, 35 minutes of ballgame. 20 points for Cardona, 16 points for Joseph Dio. They shot very well from the field, even gave up some assists here and there, and they have just been playing a great uh, I come in, you come out, I come yes, in, you come yes. out ball game. And they still finish strong together. And this has been the deadly weapon of Coach Franz Martin in his rotation. Well, Philippines, we won't let you wait any longer. We're going to start this main event of your Sunday showdown. Four times he has won the title. Five times he's been in the finals. And he wants to go back with a win today. Coach Franz Martin going up against debuting rookie coach Sandy Ares Bocachaga. Lasal, Ateneo. Animo Lasal. One big fight. Starting for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. At guard number six, standing five seven, L.A. Tenorio. And the 
other guard, number eight, standing 5'11", Pati Del Rosario. At center, number 18, standing 6'4", Doug Kramer. Forward, number 10, standing 6'4", Martin Dimson. And the other forward, number 7, standing 6'4", J.C. Indow. And their head coach, Sandy Ellis Lomachaga, wearing their dark colored uniforms, starting with the LaSalle Green Archers. At guard, number 11, standing 5'7", Team Y10. And the other guard, number 18, standing 6'1", Ryan Aranya. Center, number 16, standing 6'3", Jerwin Dackel. Forward, number five, standing 6'4", Jude Gabatu. And the other forward, number 17, standing 6'1", Mac Gardana. And their head coach, Brad Slobodin. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screens are Nescafe starting five. A truly good game coming up. Good afternoon once again, Philippines. Thank you very much for watching us. We are glad to have you with us. Live from the Big Dome, over Studio 23 for ABS-CBN Sports. Group Gonzalez, DJ Manoto, Ateneo, La Salle. For the fourth time in season 67, will there be a fifth time? Well, that will all be up to how Ateneo will play today, DJ. Well, right off the bat, looking at our starting fives, group for La Salle. Same starting five as the last game. They've been having a wonderful seven-game winning streak. So their philosophy, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Yep. So that's their philosophy today. But for Atenea and the man, I bumped into team consultant Norman Black in the dugouts earlier, and I asked him what's going on. And he says, expect some pretty big changes in this ball game because of how horrific they played in the last game in terms of um, the lack of the uh, ball movement, the lack of uh, assists in that ball game. They only had 11 assists as compared to the Rosales 20. Looking at the starting lineup right now, Boop, Magnum Mebrera is not starting for Ateneo. Neither is Paulo Bugia, so that's a big difference already in the starting five of Coach Sandy. Maybe that point could also be to help boost their bench scoring, because you know Magnum can score and put the points on the board, so making him come off the bench could be a slight adjustment to help out that bench scoring, because as you saw in our pregame, they were absolutely walloped by LaSalle in bench scoring. In 42 to 21 points. Apollo Bugia also not starting, possibly because of the fever or the flu. Yep. According to Chini Canivel, uh, the flu is what hit Apollo Bugia. He's the only one wearing a jacket here, the big dome, DJ. And right now, we don't feel any kind of air conditioning anymore because we are experiencing a capacity crowd here at the Araneta Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Hardly. Well, I, I looked at him during the warm. He was moving okay, but that's it. He's just a jacket. And we'll see as to how his condition is. I've asked some people, they didn't sound too optimistic. Now, you know, normally, if there's a problem with some player, then okay, so he's okay, he's okay. So we'll see how he will fare today. We are still looking for our first points, and Matt Cardona will go cherry picking with a slam of Gemma. An emphatic start to this ball game. Another big category where in the South dominated Ateneo in their first game in that uh, knockout game. Fast break points. Tenorio goes to the other side with that patented LA Tenorio reverse shot to tie the ball game at two. 8.45 remaining. Aranya, who played awesome in the first half of that playoff Tuesday with eight points. Also starting for coach Franz Kumar, and most of those eight points came from assists yes. from Nak Cardona. And they were backdoor cuts, something which Ateneo's defense really lacked. Weak, weak side defense of Ateneo was very weak in that ball game. And I'm sure they're going to notice that and try their best to plug those holes in this ball game. But you know, you mentioned the name of Ryan Aranya, who everybody keeps talking about Mac Cardona and Joseph Yo, how great they've been playing for La Salle, and how wonderful that strategy was of making Joseph Yo come off the bench. But it will also only work if Aranya plays good minutes to start in the place of Joseph Yo, which Mac, he has done. Mac Cardona with a four points of La Salle, and not only that, he plays good defense yes. against L.A. Tenorio. I mentioned that yesterday on Sports TV. Part of the reason why Coach Franz Pumarin keeps Cardona on Tenorio is the fact that Cardona has incredible lateral movement and those long arms. The wingspan, the wingspan is amazing. I mean, and his ability to really play great 
defense with his feet staying in front of his man. It's a high octane ball game so far here in the Big Dome. And just to think, we look at the score, it's just four to two. First, the tap as those long arms of Matt Cardona forces the turnover. And this is your Milo amazing fast break. Cardona with four points, all of them for DLSU. And right away, those were two things, two turnovers and two fast break points. Uh, four fast break points and four turnover points para sa side. Expect this to be a highly physical game aside from the fact that it is a highly emotional one. A foul is called as Cardona was accidentally tripped going to the pipe. He is obviously in an offensive mode right now as we see in our Smart Buddy Instant Replay. The foul called on Martin Kimson. Well, that's an interesting matchup. Boom, Kimson is the one trying his best to stay in front of Mac Cardona. So if you're Cardona, ayan, magigigil ka eh. Makikita mo, big man na bumabantay sa'yo. Fake him off and take it off the dribble. And that is what is making Mac Cardona's eyes light up so big at the start of this ball game. Gibson called for a second straight personal. Let's go first to Mickey Dallas to check out the Green Archers. Mickey. Watching the team a few minutes before one of their daily practices, one wouldn't be able to find any trace of the pressure presented by the oncoming Sunday game against the Blue The boys were goofing around, cracking jokes, mimicking their moves on the court. A typical scene of boys being boys. But when the clock strikes four and practice officially begins, that means business. And it is then that one sees the underlying agenda. The archers have been constantly reminded that the Eagles will not give them an easy time today. On the contrary, the Eagles are expected to hit them hard, and the archers must be prepared for their counterattack. This preparation is what the past few days has been all about. Incidentally, the archers will be playing minus number 10, Rico Merrenhofer, who is down with a fever. Back to Boom and TJ. Thank you very much. First point, uh, while Vicky was reporting, Macardona showing another Gorgeous. weapon of his as he gives the assist to Jerwin Gago. And Another now this one. time, his favorite has been Ryan Aranya. Two assists, four points, a steal. Mac Cardona is making a serious bid for MVP. You know, it's not only the fact that he's wanting to be a decoy, but he's actually being very aggressive and looking for his points, looking to drive to the basket. But he has that presence of mind. Once he gets double team and triple team, he immediately finds the open man and has the quick reflexes to give them. And there he gets a rebound and tries to give up an assist to Jun Kabatu as we send it over to Chini Canivel for this report on the Blue Eagles. It is crunch time today for the Blue Eagles. And as starting point guard L.A. Tenoria says, we have made some adjustments on our defense, but when it comes down to it, we just really need to work harder as a team, both offensively and defensively. And the question that we are asking ourselves now is, how much do we want to win? And I can tell you this much, that the Blue Eagles are definitely focused and determined to win. Boom and TJ. Thank you very much, Shidi. And that's something that a lot of people notice they lack in that knockout game, Boom. Focus. LaSalle obviously came out so strong and so much more focused than Ateneo was. And a lot of people, a lot of people even were saying that it was very disheartening for them to see Ateneo I don't give up nga in the first in the fourth quarter, early in the fourth palang eh, si Pusuko na at nawawala na talaga na focus. So we'll see if they prepared enough to focus 40 minutes of this ball game and edge out that win and come for a do or die game on Thursday. And I'm sure they do know, they do uh, understand the fact that there is no tomorrow for them. No, the only all. tomorrow no. that they will have is if they win this game. Now, Mebrera is in the ball game. He stops, pops, nothing there. Backs down the rebound. Gintal sends it out to L.A. Tenorio. LaSalle is in the lead by 6, 10 to 4. Ateneo has always been known to be a slow starting team. And they're proving that again today. As Cardona forces the issue of trying to chase L.A. Tenorio. I think he's a little bit tired. I'm talking about Magma Cardona right now. Over the place, but so far, looking at the first couple of plays of Ateneo, even though they're down 10 to 4, you've seen some changes in their offensive rotation. A lot more movement away from ball, but so far it's still been this man. Magma Cardona has come to play once again and been the main man dishing off assists to his teammates. The noise is deafening. Here, as we look at uh, Senator Dick Gordon and, of course, MVP and the blue side of things, Mr. Dato Arroyo. Always here, Mr. Gary Lis Leasing, rather. One of the few times that you won't see him laughing or smiling. 
5.54 to play, and it is a six-point lead for the Green Archers looking to win this one to book the return to the finals. FBU is sitting pretty watching this game intently. And if ever the finals will happen, it will start on Thursday as J.C. and Thaw kisses it off the window for his first two points. And a good sign, DJ, that he looked to be aggressive yes. and drive right away. And that was a nice play to set him up before he caught the ball. As you saw some inside points earlier, obviously dominated right away by the Nassau. And Tom Siyintal came off his screen coming down to the post. More movement for him before he catches the ball. Challenging his defender more. And you know they get him. And overplay Sikako. He quickly turned to the basket. Got an easy lane to the basket. Tenorio was foiled in his attempt, but there was a foul on Ryan Aranya. Joseph Yo getting ready to step into this game with a brand spanking new haircut too. So this is going to be the first substitution as you see our final away from that trip. For any time, anywhere, energy. Grab a bar now. D.Y. Thang definitely stepping up in season 67. And as we expected, Yo comes in for Macardona. That's a first substitution for the Green Shirts. As for Ateneo already with two substitutions as Bugia has come in the ball game. Also, Magdalene Bere, and also Coach Sandy could not wait any longer. He doesn't want to really wait for a strong start. If it doesn't come, he's going to bring in his big guns right away. I don't know why they've been asking. I think that's a little earlier than what he had probably planned. And an offensive foul. JC and Tal called for this one as Ryan Aranya, who is always willing to take the charge. A guy who is known to do the dirty work for, and when I say that, I mean, you, if you say, and you, the things that not, the other players don't want to do, yeah. dive, right. pang -pang uh -huh. take charge. You know, as they always say in basketball, every basketball team needs a guy like Ryan Aran. That's what you call the utility man, yeah. quote unquote. D.Y. Tang launches, nothing there. Intal high up for the retrieval. Tenorio accelerates. But D.Y. Tang in front of him. They go to Bugia. Bugia had a good game against Lasal the first time, but remember, he is playing with a flu. Tenorio, quarter court, three-point shot. Gets oh. the bounce. <laughs> and he gets it to go for his fifth point of the game and comes the lead down to one. Oh, nice quick pass by oh. D.Y. Tang. Gabo unable to get it up, but Aranya again in the middle among the trees, able to get the repossession. You know, I think God also blesses the hard working guys. Oh, not, only, not only does he work hard to get where he wants to be, but he's also lucky as you see this big three up and finally in. All brought to us by Smart Buddy to cut the lead down to one, 10 to nine. Four 12 remaining. Aranya, the hard working guy, you know, we've seen or we saw Signs of him being that kind of a player last year. He has been suspended a couple of last year and uh, this year because of uh, unsportsmanlike fouls. But that is something that he has already taken in stride. <laughs> Reputation. And this kid is only on his second year. Yon, yon. So three more fruitful play years with him. Uh, with the Genesal Green Archer, so they are very upbeat, I'm sure, with the way he has played this year. Denorio to Kramer, oh, nice and what a way to protect the ball. He used his back to get over Chun Kabatu, and now we are tied at 11 with under four minutes to play in the first quarter. You know, in their last game, in the knockout game, boom, Denorio only had three assists. I say only because I think that's a low number for a guy like Eli Denorio. Yes. He has to be more aggressive in creating situations for his teammates, driving and ditching. Yes, he scored 22 points in that last yes. game, but he's got to set up his teammates at better spots and better timing in his pass. Let's look at this incredible look from Tenorio to Kramer and the nice finish by Kramer. Puma size assist brought to you by Nescafe Ice. Do the move, and I don't know about you, DJ, but I'm seeing a different Ateneo team here in the first quarter, a yep. team that is playing with a sense of urgency. Well, the emotion is there, the sense of urgency, the pride, the heart, they're showing it right away. But they've also seemed to be, they have come very technically well prepared for this ball. They seem to be in control too of yes, themselves. correct. He's in a the panic. They know where they made their mistakes in their first encounter last uh, Tuesday. And they seem to be very confident in the changes that they have done so far. Even though it's only a tight ball game, yes, they're not yes. leading by a big number. But the way they're moving the ball, the confidence you see in their faces, Ima Yumi 
And you know, a lot of people will tell you, okay, yeah, you play with emotion, but sometimes people or the players channel the emotion the wrong way. Yeah. Membrere out to Kramer. Doesn't get the bounce. Dang comes away with a rebound. Doesn't force the fast break. Ends up with a 17-footer. Doesn't get the roll. And Kramer has come away with a couple of rebounds in the game. You know what happened in that last play move? And don't see Kabato beat the other big man down court. But Eddie Tenorio quickly went down to help because Kabato already sealed off an Athenaeum player. So he double teamed him even without the ball. And denied D.Y. Dang that inside pass. It was a good attempt by Kramer, but he was caught straddling the baseline. Nevertheless, you have to appreciate the effort of Kramer and the rest of the Blue Eagles. Coach Vito Pumare, nothing to be ashamed of for his uh, boys and his efforts. And of course, uh, see Senator Ralph Recto with uh, the son Christian, I believe. Joining us here at the Big Dome, turnover department. And now with five, Nassau catching up with a couple of turnovers down the stretch. Well, and also turnover point six already for DLSU, and that's one thing. Ateneo hasn't yet checked in this ball game, although at least in the other categories, as you've said, ball movement, yes. movement without the ball, giving screens, as I even heard Coach Sandy in the timeout and there, give some more staggered screens. I was looking for that in the last game. I didn't see that from them. You saw a lot of isolations, a lot of pick and rolls, and basically that was the offense of Ateneo in that knockout game. Now they're getting the weak side more involved in the offense, challenging the defense of La Salmoa. Ball is for the green shirts as Jonathan Nueva and J.B. Castro are in the ball game. The outside attempt, Dayo. No reset on the shot clock. I don't know if Villanueva realizes that because it didn't hit the ring. So they shoot it and it comes up short. Casal trying to get the ball back and they do as Doug Kramer did not expect the Benitez knockout. Under two minutes to play, and we are steady at 11. Kasho. Off to Kabatu. What a setup job by J.B. Kasho. What a strong drive there by Kabatu. Not settling for a 8-foot, 10-foot jumper. Wanted to make it strong and possibly get some fouls of the Big Bear. So it's Villanueva's assignment now to go up after L.A. Tenorio. Fugia gets the seal on Benitez, and in the process, Benitez fouls Fugia. That's something you were seeing also today. Some more high low post up plays from Ateneo. The other big man trying to feed the big man ceiling down low. And it basically helps open up the inside because you're pulling out one big man defender. As you see, Marcos Colonna. Fornado coming in with him as Kramer and Tenorio sit down. La Sala ahead by 2, 13 to 11, 135 to play. Thank you very much for watching us live over Studio 23. It is White Ball. Chris Tew joins Escalona at backcourt. And on the move you bench to coach Sandy. This is very critical that this five has to be very productive because in the last game they were totally outscored 42 to 21. They're going to have to be very aggressive, not tentative when they get their open looks and take them. Both teams already over the limit, and Michael Membrere, regardless, will shoot two free throws because it was deemed in the act of shooting. And then they are trying to stay alive as they need to beat La Salle twice, a feat that they have done in the year 2002 en route to a championship. He consulted on the block. Was that the year of uh, Jack G's shot? Yes. That was yes. That, yeah. The shot. The shot. And then he come back to Membrere. 15th parallel good. Two for two. So those are pitch points automatically yes. for Ateneo. And that's one adjustment that Coach Sandy made. With not starting with Magdo, not starting with Paolo Bugia, making them go off the bench to make some more adjustments on his rotation. But I must balance back. And then firepower so on the second and third units. Kabatu with a cut. Nowhere to go. Eight on the shot clock. Kasha with a teardrop. And Mugia with the rebound. Under a minute to play. Mugia traveled. The infraction on the big guy. It's a good ball by the ref. Paulo Mugia. Langigil. He saw an open lane and all he had to beat was it on Sibinitas. But he traveled, shuffled his feet before he put that ball on the floor. Lasal with 10 rebounds so far. And the nail with eight. This is Franz Pumaret was on your screen just a while back. Joseph Yo still not able to score here and a foul away from the ball. It's 
called on Naki Escalona. 46 seconds remaining, and 13 all is our score. I remember in the playoff Tuesday, our score was 21 to 17, DJ. A high scoring ball game which favored La Salle. Javier Aguilar makes his first appearance in the final four. I say that because, well, first of all, this is the first yeah. final four for him. And in the game against La Salle, he did not play. play. And a lot of the Ateneo armchair coaches raised eyebrows and kept saying, why would you put a G for instead of Javier Aguilar? Now he comes in early. Normally you see him in second quarter or mid quarter. This and is an early entrance for Javier the baby. Good one. Mas mga bala kasama pa si Ford Arrow. Correct. Kasama si Ford Arrow. Also, this also might be because of Paolo. Yes, yes. That's not really 100%. Oh, J.B. Castro missing both from the 15th parallel. You don't see that too often. Ateneo with a chance to take the lead as they are tied right now at 13. Maki Escalona may be handling the ball too much. Membrere releases off the back iron and Villanueva tracks down the recovery. Yo! Could not handle the ball and it stays with Lasalle. That's it, one thing that Ateneo sometimes falls in the trap with. Your point guards sometimes hold the ball a little too long. Maki Escalona, even it doesn't say anything on you because of him wanting to find the seat to the defense. The Metro, Papagala, you can't have a bit of a bag and the stability of the point guard to follow you. Here's an interesting thing here right now. Because I usually see Ateneo play zone when Javier Aguilar is in the game. Right now, I think they're playing man-to-man -man yeah. still. Cholo, top angle to work with. And the ball will go to the white shirts with 3.6 seconds remaining in the first 10 minutes of action here at the Big Dome. Another big man in for Coach uh, France right now is Michael Davido, who only saw one minute, one minute in that knockout game last Tuesday. So this is another adjustment on the part of Coach France, somebody wants to add firepower to his big Brere finds Aral. Escalona throws it up, oh, almost oh, in, but no go. Neither team giving an inch in the first 10 minutes of the game. 13 all is our score. Mac Cardona started off the LaSalle campaign very strongly, and then JC and Dal countered with two points of his own. between Ateneo and LaSalle. Start of the second quarter here on Studio 23. Yo goes inside, dishes off the assist, but Villanueva could not handle the hot leather. One thing you can notice in this ball game so far with Ateneo's defense is they're tightening things up on the inside. They were really very frustrated by the fact that they gave up 52, boom, 52 points in the paint yeah, out man. of the 82 of LaSalle. That is... That's a big unforgivable. Yeah, that's unforgivable. They give up those many points inside the paint. So they're tightening things up inside now, forcing the green shirt to take some more outside shots. One indication of that was remember that fast break where D.Y. Yes, out yes, the shot yes. because then already went straight into the paint and blocked off the inside pass of the big man. So well, that's a classic case, DJ, of the defense dictating the yes. offense or what to do. Exactly. And I guess they're going to live and die with that. Don't give out other guys like Villanueva, D.Y. Tan. JV Cash, if they hit the big shots of the 3.9, that's the risk that Ateneo is going to take. And again, they break up the interior play on that one. Membrere throws it out. Oh, what a save. The fourth Aro, what a save indeed. And Aro finishing with a smile. And lead is with Ateneo, the first two points of the second battle. Membrere playing very well here off the bench. Yo, lines up the three, nothing there. Gavino with the rebound. He goes Ooh. up, he gets blocked. Talk about interior defense. Oops. Maybe not a pass that you would want. Javed Aguilar bothering Chris Dew. Make that Joseph Yo. Dew goes to Escalona. That's an offensive foul. That's an offensive foul. What a smart play there by the sophomore, J.P. Casho. Knowing what Chu wanted to do, yes. drive in this in a sense he did not. I'm going to plant myself here and take that charge. First up, let's look at this play once again. Nowhere to go, but you see the corner of the eye. He finds Ford Otto, who just kisses it off the glass. The coolest eyes he says brought to you by Nescafe Eyes. Do the move. 
Ford Arrow is the most unlikely big man finisher. But, but he happens to do it a lot. A lot, especially when L.A. Tenorio yes. is playing. I've seen that Yung so much. Yung itura kasi ng katawan niya, boom, parang hindi siya ng mababilis for a big man. But his looks are very deceiving for his agility on the court. Mark Benitez, Joseph Yojo, Kabato, J.B. Castro, and Tono Villanueva. Nice up another move by Mark Benitez, and a foul is called on Ford Arrow. But you see LaSalle having a miserable time inside today, at least, in the first half. Remember, aside from those 52 inside points in the paint pool, LaSalle also had, I think, 20 assists in that ballgame. So imagine 40 easy buckets. And I'm sure most of those were inside the paint also. So they have a mas mas passing lanes. They don't want to give LaSalle that kind of an easy time to execute an operating I know. I do remember as we look at uh, coaches Santiago Spotajaga and Coach Franz Kumare. And he, they both want to join Coach Boy Banal in the finals. Coach Boy, of course, doing his homework. That will never end unless the season ends. I wanted to go back to the point that went uh, Ryan and myself did the last game, the playoff Tuesday game. The major theme of that conference was extra pass yes. because we saw so many extra passes Correct. coming from Lasan. That's when the weak side defense of Ateneo has to come to play and be more aware of the play. I remember Aranya had so many cuts in the play back door. It was benefited by the nice passes by Macadona. Ward Aro tried to do too much and committed the traveling infraction. Chini Canivel now joining us on courtside for the Blue Eagles. Chini? To get the edge over LaSalle, Ateneo has to be able to play excellent team defense. And that is why Coach Sandy reminded his boys to sprint down on defense, not to allow LaSalle the opportunity to drive, and also not to allow LaSalle to have easy two-point jump shots. On offense, Coach Sandy told his team to set solid screens, to have the perimeter men help out the big men, and most especially not to stop moving around the court. Boom and TJ. Why is it that when either Mickey and the Sheedy <laughs> report something an awesome play out. Yes. <laughs> Emotionally charged play just happened a while ago. A great extra pass by LaSalle, but Rabato's layup was foiled by Matthias Escalona. Escalona was called for the morning for taunting. A technical one. A technical one. Warning. 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 Cardona almost had the presence of mind to get it up. Ital is asking for the ball against Mac Cardona. Well, he's gonna beg for that ball against a smaller Mac Cardona. But he wanted it lower. Good right. pop. Mas pa -pa -pa. Escalona. Up to Tenorio with seven. Tenorio has to make something happen here. They're preparing for the step back. Escalona releases for the three. That's short. And Cabato ends up giving it up to Cardona. Under seven minutes to play. Cardona against the rest of Ateneo! It up and in! Against three white shirts like that. 16 to 15, the lead shifts back to LaSalle. And speaking of LaSalle, let's go straight to Mickey Dallas. The archers were told that the Eagles will get their shots, but that they cannot let that stop them or intimidate them. The boys were also told not to foul because this will ruin their rhythm. Instead, they should focus on pushing the ball as soon as they get it while staying under control. They were also told to pick up their intensity. Coach said that there is no room for us to be tired, no room for us to give up. They know that this game will not be served on a silver platter, so that we'll have to work extra hard for it. In the words of Mac, they need to attack back. Back to Boom and TJ. Mac Cardona scores his eighth point of the game, and again, as Mickey Dallas reports, L.A. Tenorio executes a magical shot. Tenorio inside, but the pass broken up, and it's Cardona again. And he forces the issue, but a blocking foul, I, I believe, will be called on Mackey. That's a good foul to give up, though. That's a very good foul to give up. You don't want to give LaSalle more importantly, Mac Cardona, more confidence, especially in the open court. They beat you up in the last game on transition, and if you can give up some fouls to stop those easy two points, you better do so. Mackey, Mac Cardona, rather, is four out of five from the field. It's a one-point lead for LaSalle over Ateneo. Back here at the big dome where the pep squads and the fans are going at it during the timeouts, not only on the floor, I mean, even off the court. The fans of both schools are duking it out here in the Ateneo-LaSalle final four matchup. And 
that's the score on your screens. And it doesn't change as Doug Kramer deflects the June Kamatu shot. Majid Del Rosario is back in the game. Denorio now the sole point guard. Majid asking for the low post position against Kasha. He gets it, twirls, he loves that shot, and he gets it up and in. At that time, Majid recognized there was no double team coming. He backed his man down just a little bit more to get him a more comfortable, closer shot, and he got that made away where he likes it. Kasha in the defense. Wow. Gets it up and in. That's up the little guy in the land of the Giants. And you usually expect J.B. Kasha to just settle for the outside shot. At that time, he drove it to the heart of the Ateneo oh, yeah. defense, and he breaks this play. Cardona loses possession to Baji, and Ital picks it up. No numbers for Ateneo. L.A. gives it up to J.C. Ital. Malu Bogea against Kabatu. Sending it over, but G from the corner gets it to go and five straight points for Baji Del Rosario as he punts his own side of things there at the Big Dome. Here at the Big Dome, he is pumped and he is playing defense on Mac Cardona too. That's a block called on Baji. That's a big thing for Ateneo to find guys who can put big. Significant numbers on the board, aside from Tenorio, aside from Mental, Baji Del Rosario with a big three from the corner. Baji with a smart buddy three at that from the corner. Baji Del Rosario averaging 21% from beyond the arc. It is 22-20 with 417 remaining. Mack continues to be aggressive in this game. The Fink sends it out to T.Y. Tang. Nothing there. And Bugia ends up with a repossession. I guess it right, Boom. They're going to give T.Y. shot, T.Y. Tang his shots in this ball game. They're going to say, you take it, you be the hero for Lasal kung kaya mo. L.A. Tenorio always, always over Macardona and helping oh, the team. Look at that. This is what I'm talking about. Macardona very smart on defense. Oh, what and what a play. What a spectacular pass by T.Y. Tang, which all started with Mac Cardona's anticipation of that low post pass. Alam mo, Boom, yung kagandaan din ang fastback ng Lasal. They run in sync. They're not just running. You yes. know, I'm gonna now run down court and hopefully you find me. They're running in sync like one machine that knows where everybody is. Cardona is on it now. Gives it up to Kramer. Kramer, up and in. No. Ooh. For the second straight time, steps on the baseline. And Coach Andy Aras Pocachaga says, wala ka na magagawa. Go back down on defense. Let's look at this Milo Amazing fast break. Cardona knowing where the pass was going. Gives it up to Tang. Tang looks left, passes right, and Kabatu finishes that Milo Amazing fast break. We are knotted at 22 all. Cardona in the wow. middle of things. Going away probably with another extra step there, but oh, big steal here by Castro. Cardona. Again, the fake and the teardrop. Four straight points for Mac Cardona. 12 points in the ball game. Eight points in the second quarter. And who's the man? Mac Cardona's the man. Nasal up by four, 26 to 22 at the 258 mark of this second quarter. As Mac Cardona is scoring 12 points so far. Six out of seven from the field, and he has dismantled that Ateneo defense on his own. And in those last two plays, Ruiz made mincemeat specifically of JC Intal's defense, who's supposedly the guy they want to match up against because he's taller, more athletic, and blocked the shots. But so far, Mac Cardona has been on. Cabrera almost committing the traveling infraction, and Ateneo is crumbling right now. But Franz Pumarin. I'm sure was very happy about that. That's coming off at Ateneo timeout too. Mack asking for it. Kasha gets the ball. Kasha gets the nod. Short. And Mepreda picks up the loose one. L.A. Tenorio now surveys the field and enters their attack zone. 226 to play. Arau. That's a tough shot as Mark Benitez was there to bother him. 
Kramer is all alone for the easy two. This time, he made sure he didn't step on anything. Exactly. Kanina pa yun, nakakuha ng magandang drop pass, but he stepped on the baseline. But that was a nice pick and roll between LA and Otto, but the thing that lacked there was the extra pass. Otto should have realized that a double team was coming right at him and somebody was bound to be open. Lakas ng pasa ni Benitez. Too much steam on that one, and Cardona found it too hot. In the meantime, nice pass that Kula Sainz assist brought to you by Nescafe Ice to the move. Doug Kramer cuts the lead down to two. Tenorio barges in. Intal hesitates and then puts it up and in and ties the ball game at 26. Now you're really seeing a much more offensively aggressive Eli Tenorio specifically wanting to set up his defense. Cardona again. Relentless, but Otto is there to deny him of entry. Denorio looks ahead, sees nothing, and loses the ball. Loses focus just for a second. Dy Tang accelerates, and a foul is called the block on LA Denorio. And he apologizes right apologizes right away to Dy. Well, I'm among other. Well, I'm among. He just stepped on his foot and bumped it there. But I feel like Dy Tang, even without somebody there, would have. Oh, there, you knew foul. That's the obvious the body bump. The body bump is it. But no elbow, no, no, no sharp, no trip, no sharp joint. <laughs> That's our smart buddy instant replay. Uh, LA checked out first if the referees would call it an unsportsmanlike foul. Oh. Then he apologized. As we look at the info on Cholo Villanueva. We are, by the way, joined by referees Stan Manyala and Tolentino. This man is a pride of. San Agustin in Mahati. It's been a long time since a, a great player has come out of that oh, that's school. Cool. Yep. And he's coming off an injury too. As T.Y. Tang rips out the free throw. He is averaging, this is a surprising, 48% from the 15th parallel. I expected him to shoot better from that area. You know, at the start of the season, T.Y. Tang's outside shot. Yes, he passed it through. Yes. You know, late in the second round, he wasn't taking the same amount of shots anymore. It wasn't as uh, accurate. accurate anymore. So maybe, so go to dissecting the numbers to Ateneo, and then us again. Let's give this guy more shots. And let yeah. him take the control of the outside shots for Lasal. Yeah. Yeah. The lead is one. Lasal. Intal commands the double. And then the face up jumper up the glass. That is a confident shot. And the five points make that six points for JC and Tal. Cardona can do that to it down, give up the shot if he were about three more feet out. But he was too close to the basket. That was a six foot, five foot jumper for JC and Tal. DY shoots it again. And this is everything. Oh, nice move by Jolo Villanueva. Able to get it up and in with the foul. Nice pick up there by Jolo Villanueva. Being at the right place at the right time. Picking up the air ball from D.Y. Tang. Referees now talking to Cholo and Doug as we look at this. Smart buddy instant replay, just being at the right place at the right time. And then the foul by Magno de Prere with a lucky roll for Cholo Villanueva. A three-point play opportunity to cut the lead, make that to get the lead up possibly to two. Oh, on sec for second motion, we have had 10 lead changes, DJ, in this game. You know, I do remember we were talking before this game, we were wondering the differences of LaSalle's lineup this year and last year. We don't see Tim Gatchalian anymore. Exactly. For LaSalle playing as many minutes as he did last year. That's because of this guy, who has come back from an injury and played very well this year, coming off the bench for both friends. Averaging close to 13 very productive minutes for Coach Franz Kumaret. We have time for around three more plays, barring any hitch. And it is a close one for the Beans, 30 to 28. LA sets it up to Magnum, corner pocket shot, nothing there. And the ball will stay with the white shirts with 34 seconds remaining before we reach the half. You know, the, uh, I don't want to get, go on, get ahead of ourselves, DJ, but the crucial part of this game will be how Ateneo will start the third quarter. Yes. They have been very every time. MPU did that to them. LaSalle did that to them. As we see, Ford Arau's shot negated because of a traveling infraction. Good call. That's on shot first two. And Coach Franz Kumara makes a strategic change here. And on offense, he sends back in Mac Cardona, his best offensive player so far. Well, he wants to finish strong and come up with the last shot here, even though there is a 
2.9 second differential between game clock and shot clock. So let's see. D.Y. Tang will try to squeeze out some, as much as he can. That's the clock on your screens. Those are the clocks on the screens. Seven on the shot clock. They send it out to Cholo. Fakes one, shoots, and then... What's the call? All right, so it's a 24 second infraction. We should adjust the time. Exactly. Because there was clearly 2.9 difference to start that time. They're not. That's strange. That is strange. They should put a little more time there, going back to our differential, you know? Because if the difference of the clock and the shot clock and the game clock was 2.9, yes. at the end of that buzzer, it, hit the ring. it would be different if it hit the ring, but it didn't. Nevertheless, it is a two-point lead for De La Salle University, and Mac Cardona is in a funk, and it's a good kind of funk, too, as Cardona, productive, in this first half, 12 points to lead DLSU. If LaSalle wins this one, they go meet FEU in the finals on Thursday. If Ateneo wins today, do or die. There's no other way to describe that. That's going to be a free-for-all oh, yeah. here in the Big Dome. And that's when you throw the stats all out that's the it. window. That's yeah. why at the top of the coverage, DJ. French Kumaren, been in the, the championship five times, winning four out of the five, knows that he cannot give Ateneo a chance to come back to win and regain its confidence and winning form. You know, a lot of people would tend to argue that if Ateneo wins today, the pressure will be on La Salle on Thursday. As they must expect that Sina to have come out with a win in this series, winning the knockout match and having a twice speed advantage, and especially considering that they have had that awesome run. Yes. Seven straight games. As you exactly. look at Ateneo's record in their last eight games, they are three, three and, and five. five. And then they're coming off back-to-back -back yes. defeats the first time here in season 67 after sweeping the first round of the UAAB. So para sa maraming Ateneo fans who, they just want to get over this hump. When they get over this oh, yes. hump and get this victory, they feel that there's no pressure on them on the, on the third game and that the uh, ones who will have their backs against the wall will probably be the Green Archers. So we'll see what happens in today's ball game. Still a very hotly contested one, as we mentioned in our in our halftime analysis. 17 costly turnovers already by Ateneo. Pero ang magandang ginagawa ng Ateneo boom na pambawi dun, their transition defense in this ball game has been much better. Imagine, 17 turnovers, but they've only given eight Fast break points to La Salle. Yes, the fast break points category is 8 to 0. But 8 is a decent number considering 17 na ang turnovers mo. Ama. Third quarter is underway and first possession will go to the green shirts. And we also would like to note an interesting stat that we saw that La Salle did not commit a single foul yeah. in the second quarter. And Ateneo starts off the third quarter yeah. with one. I think in that uh, second quarter, Ateneo was called for about four or five fouls while Lasal had a totally clean state. So what does that mean for the Lasal? Well, that means very few guys or even hardly or none of them would be in foul trouble coming in here into the second half. And they have been playing not great, but decent defense without fouling that much. Well, mind you, I checked the stats of the first half and apparently Lasal only has one foul the whole ball game whoa <laughs> and that was called on uh oh sorry that was with the one so it's five fouls for now we're calling the first quarter and you may free throw five bad sorry so two fouls on ryan Aranya, but then you got cardona with one and control of 11 one and ty tang with one. no big man with a single foul para sa so far but he breaks the press steps into their attack zone and the lead is four now for La Salle, courtesy of the two free throws of Mac Cardona, who's got 10 points in the game. Intal against Cardona, finds nice Gibson pass. underneath. Oh, that looks like a Cardona, Ryan Aranya exactly. play. I was about to say that looked like a La Salle play <laughs> of what we saw in that knockout match last Tuesday. Mas mataas ito si Intal kay Cardona, kaya medyo nakikita niya yung floor ng mabuti. No? And he's got those that ability to pass well. In the meantime, Aranya connects on that one and send it over to Chini Canivel for a report on the Blue Eagles. Chini. 
Ateneo may have been down by two points at the end of the first half, but the atmosphere in the dugout was light. Coach Sandy recommended his boys for playing good defense in the first half and asked them to keep it up to the end of the game. He also reminded them that they have to be able to deny LaSalle to get the drop passes and also to bump box. Consultant Norman Black reminded the team that the game has to be won through defense and not offense. Coach Sandy also added that the team can't dwell on their errors. They have to start the third quarter strong. Boom and TJ? Exactly. Great point there, Chini, because, again, we mentioned this at the tail end of the second quarter. Mm -hmm. The third quarter is the most crucial yes. for Ateneo. So far in their last two games, they have been bludgeoned in this quarter. This quarter hasn't been their favorite, TJ. And in their losses, really, this has been the, the Waterloo of Ateneo starting strong in the second half. LA with a teardrop, nothing there. Araña comes away with a rebound. Cardona is ahead of everybody else, Ooh. but puts the ball down and Baji challenges him. A pile up there, feet. Up there, may pito na, may pito na. May pito na. Here we go again, Baji. You know, you know Gago. the interesting thing, Boom? It was LA Tenorio on top of Baji. Baji could not see he was hitting him. It was LA Tenorio who was on top of Baji, and that's why he was kicking and, sh and pushing out of his way. And yun tinamaan ni Paji si LA, LA thought somebody else was hitting him. We'll see in the replay, but that's what I saw from my point of view. Tingnan natin yung kabilang angulo kung nakuha natin yun, ano? You know, you know, Coach Franz Pumarin pointing to his head, saying, we gotta keep our composure yeah. here. Well, let's check it out. There's gonna be a pile up here. Paji knocks the ball off. It's gonna be Kako on the floor. Baji and Tenorio. Now, nobody's Ito touching Baji. Ito yung paani. Yeah. Tenorio. And pati yung paani. Gako, yan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, na, and things were said. Doug Kramer saying something to Jerwin. And then Baji going after T.Y. Tang. And the referees, Dan Manyalak and Tolentino, prevailing. Let's look at it at a closer angle. Nice stab from Baji, preventing it. This is a better angle. We'll see what happens. It was really the contact from Tenorio on Baji. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is not here. Yes. Is it here? Warning to Adam Adam. Intal goes straight to the rack. Nothing there. The top going to Doug Kramer who makes a mistake and puts it on the floor. A foul called on Jerwin Gako. So just as we mentioned to start the second half, Walang a foul foul ang mga big men ng Lasal. Gako quickly picks up two back-to-back -back fouls on back-to-back -back defensive plays. Oh, we warned you about how highly emotional and highly physical this game is going to be. Remember, Ateneo's season hinges yep. on the result of this game. And they've got to have their hands in check, both of these teams. Huh? And they don't have the luxury of a twice-to-beat advantage, but she throws it up. Nothing there. It's a battle for the loose on. ball and Timson called for this one. Maganda na yung box out ni Ryan Aranya. He had the position on Timson and Timson wanted to get inside and said, excuse me, and that was a little too much pushing and shoving. I'm going to keep my eye on Ryan Aranya and Pachi. Oh, yeah. Right now. They're, the, they're the hotter ones normally. Kapag nakakilitan yung itong mga respected teams, so para sila yung mas nakipigo. And Aranya and Pachi. Talking to each other. Side show going on here at the eight minute mark of the third quarter. Cardona giving up the pass. Tough shot for Aranya who loses the ball and a foul is called. Let's see. Ball called on a white shirt. Kim Son fouls out of the ball game, but there's blood. There's the ball. Oh, there was a punch? They were, they were saying coach, that he got. Coach Jamaica, assistant coach Jamaica was saying there was a punch. They were saying, see, and there's Martin blood on the head. Oh, it's a big cut. Kramer and Junkabatu now. Who fouls out? And Martin Kimson fouls out. Oh, but G saying something to Junkabatu. Cardona telling everybody to shut up. That's weird. Yeah. Cardona telling everybody to shut up. <laughs> okay, let's, let's look at this again. Try and look closer on how Kimson gets the contact from who? Walapajan. There's Kimson. Somewhere there, it's Aranya or Gako or... Parang may bumagsak na Siko na pero mukhang unintentional. From what we saw on that far yes, angle. Yes. But that's a big cut. I don't think there was an intentional... I don't know, flailing elbows yeah, in the course of the... Yeah, flailing elbows in the course of the... But then, he fouls out. That's right. Okay. Now, Baji is, is uh, being pacified by the referees together with Aranya. 
7.50 to play. You do remember what happened in uh, last year's Final Four matchup, don't you? Uh-huh. I was in the same seat <laughs> when it all happened. Cardona. Dan, baseline drive. Gago, trouble. Boy, what action. And it's only happening here in Studio 23. This is college basketball at its best. And at its most intense. And there you go, but she and Cardona at it. Why do they love to pick up the Atenea players? I said I was doing that since the knockout game. Whenever an Atenea player falls down, they pick them up. And that's where the Atenea players get a little frustrated. France Fumara tells Ryan Aranya to take it easy. Here's that bump. There's the bump, defensive foul. Cardona was asking yeah. for that. He really he fished for that. You know, there's a lot of si Mac Mac. Matalino si Mac Mac when he's coming to Him and Wesley Gonzalez yes. are unprecedented. The Cy War uh, no, protagonists. <laughs> the ones that are good at it. Aranya nonchalantly takes the shot. Kabatu ending up with a rebound Ooh. and Tenorio taking it away. Kabatu gets it up. Nothing there. Ouch. Grab it to the side. It's getting really physical. Yeah. Aranya this time getting the raw end of the deal Woo. of the arm, of the elbow of Doug Craig. You know, I'd hate to compare, but it's starting to look like slam ball. Everybody's jumping up in the air and mid-air collisions left and right. Let's look at our smart buddy instant replay. Bang. Oh. Nothing intentional again. Alamo, nasa the sila. presence of mind boom of Aranya to quickly flick that shot off oh, yes. to get the two, the two, two shots off that loose ball foul. In situations like these, the player or the team that loses in school for just a minute or two will probably lose a game. That's what I love the best out of Mikey Gordon's story. Mental toughness yeah. in the ball game. And the ability to zone out whatever is yes. happening outside of himself. 7-16 to play. 34-30 is our score. Aranya misses the free throw and look at that cramped side of the big goal, the green side of things as I would usually say. Aranya now one out of two on that trip. Both teams, you know, sending each other the message that nothing's gonna be easy in this game. I think we know that already. Oh yeah. Membrere, 19 footer, nothing there. So it's still a four-point lead. Make that a five-point lead for the guys in green. Tang sees an opening. Nice Membrere. He saw that coming. Magnum saw what Tang exactly wanted to do to drop it off. And audio to Magnum. Kramer goes down to Ital. He can shoot over Aranya any day, but Ital misses on the jumper. Sometimes he will be baited too much to take yes. those jump shots. He should be still aggressive to take it to the basket, especially in Kumbani to Pantaya. All right, now is the time to send it over to Vicky Dallas and the Green Archers. Vicky. All right, we are here because of defense. Trust me, Coach Fran said earlier, as he told his boys never to give up on their defense. Coach also said, and I quote, I want us to run, end quote. Today, the Archers are using a mental approach, according to Coach, as mental toughness is to physical toughness as four is to one. They must stay alert and react right away. They must stay focused. They can never panic. Instead, they should always regroup, Coach said. Back to Boom and TJ. Nobody would be able to say that better than a coach who has been in the finals five times, winning four out of those five times. And I'm sure he wants to get back to that Ateneo for two reasons. First, for uh, kicking them out of the final four yeah. last year, and two years ago for losing by the Blue Eagles in the finals. You know, we're looking at Coach Andy and his Papachago is hoping to make it to his first final appearance as a head coach. You patron area at him. They don't want to use it. They don't want to use it. <laughs> they, they paid the most expensive seat in the house, but they don't want to use it. Even behind us, they're all standing up. Ranya trying to bother the Brenner. And the third quarter woes of Ateneo continue, DJ. Yep. Seven point lead on the side. Only two points so far. Look at Cardona. Oh, wow. Oh, man. You know what happened there? Cannot, cannot get better than that. <laughs> that. Cannot get better than that. And France Pumare body bumps Mark Cardona. That's still in the air, but he recovers 
mixes himself <laughs> and then puts up the classic teardrop shot. You know what? Take a second. Easy. Lang. Oh, Wala man. Eh. Oh, man. Okay, let me get back Sabi, to business. Sabi niya, 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 Classic teardrop shot, Mark Cardona on fire. Let's say how critical this third quarter is for Ateneo. And unfortunately for them, they've only scored two points so far in the last four minutes and few seconds that have gone by here in the second half. It has been their biggest problem even in the second round. And the defense of La Salle has cranked up here in the third. Tenorio was tripped. And a foul called to go to the line for two gift shots. 30 in the third personal on Ryan Benefit. And just uh, classic LA Tenorio would put that shot up. The ability to change direction even though he's going at his top speed. That's something that LA Tenorio really has in his arsenal is one of his strongest weapons of driving down the lane. Finally, a bucket for Ateneo. Third point here in the second half. Now LaSalle University has made the Final Four ten times. All of the times since the Final Four format was introduced since 1994. That speaks about the consistency of the school program, the basketball program of that school. And talking about head-to-head -head meetings since 1996, DLSU leads the pack 29 to 20. Since, since 1992, 1986, 1986. 29 and 20 advantage of La Salle over Ateneo in their head-to-head meetings. An eight-point lead for La Salle and Four. Kramer coming away with his sixth rebound of the game. We gotta go back to Jason and that set him up. I like the play they ran for him in the first half, where they had an upscreen bringing him down. But what I they just flatly setting him up on the post, which is not getting any open looks. Kako, strong move. And he gets the lead up to 10, the biggest lead of the ballgame, 41-31. A little separation between these two teams now. Ateneo has yet to make a bid here in the third quarter. Intal drives inside, Kako was there to bother him. And one thing that Lasal is doing reactionary, well, not very well, they are reacting to screens. They are not allowing Ateneo anymore those easy passes in the paint, those cuts in the paint, which they were able to get away with in the first half, which is why Ateneo at 50% shooting from the field. Now they're probably around the, the high 20s and the low 30s as they held it down only one field goal the whole third quarter. And they'll play zone now against Lasal. Abatu giving it up to Aranya, finding a way to get it up. And a foul is called the buck on JC Intal. That's going to be number three on the baby rocket. JC Intal only with six points, still with six points. That's what he had. And yeah, Aranya is becoming a headache to opposing teams, especially to Ateneo. He just slithers in the paint there where he's not supposed to be. The guy's an off-guard, and he just loves to, you know, mix it up in the paint and go for those offensive rebounds or situate himself in there with those drop passes. Joseph Yo makes his re-entry and his first entry actually here in the second half. No points for Joseph Yo, one rebound, and yet Lasalle is ahead by 10, maybe possibly 11 or 12 with the free throws from Jerwin Gakko. At the end of the half, I'm not going to pass out to me. Look at Joseph Yo. You know more than likely who put the photo. He'll get his points here and there. He's got zero points right now, and I'm sure Coach France will try to find a way to get him going. And right now, Savai Silangayan on the floor, Cardona and Joseph Yo. They're down to 4-16 in the third. That's an 11-point lead for Lasal. Tenorio, oh, and look at Cardona, he knew he was going back. Tenorio breaks up the play, gets the ball back, sends it over to back to Membrere. Membrere sidesteps, tries to draw the foul, but Cardona steps away from him. And again, where did Cardona come from? He was in the middle of that play again. A foul called on Ford Arau. 
second personal foul on the former Sanmeda Red Cup. And that's Martin Kimson. No, that's not a headache, he's nursing, but a cut. And he's fouled out too. That's right. 348, an 11 point lead. And all of a sudden, Ateneo has hit a brick wall in the third again. Zerwin Gago misses his front end of his two gift shots. You know, the, the few experimental plays I saw of Ateneo in the first half uh, gave them more movement, gave them some more screens for the shooters and the cutters. I haven't seen that here in the third quarter. It helped them in the first half get some better looks. They have forgotten that and they've gone back to a little bit of what happened to them in the knockout to measure the gap. Yeah. Measure the isolation now, close up, close up now. They need back that movement. They've got to bring it back. So, well, not but the aggressiveness of yes. Ateneo. No? They, be they have become a hesitant team again here in the third. Unlike in the first and second quarter, they were they, they, they were confident with their moves and with their shots. The, the tentativeness of Ateneo has come back. I don't know man, whether it was has affected them. The tension, you know, rising. Yes. It's their mental toughness that's cracking at this point. You'll see. And so how they can adjust. Mugia has been a non-factor in this game before the shot. Uh, and they need more of that from Boots. I've always liked that about the Mayo's big man, specifically Mugia and Ita. They have the ability to face the basket, attack from the foul line, and put on the floor. Remember Ito Rich Alvarez? Yes, that's a leopard. Rich Alvarez is not really a close of player, exactly. Nice move by Cavato. Gago trying to put it back. But Perez slows it down and gives it up to L.A. Tenoria. Coming up on the three-minute mark of the third quarter of the lead. It's still 10 for the side. Would be a too far out to be a threat. Yeah, no movement. They're watching and they hoping he does something magical with the ball. A foul ball to J.B. Castro. That's a bailout. Yeah, bailed out there. Four seconds remaining on the shot clock and penalty back. Both teams are actually over the limit. We have a timeout at the 2.46 mark. L.A. Tenorio has a chance to cut it down to a single-digit lead. Tenorio is averaging 72% from the 15 arrow. vibration here in Victoria. That happens with the double, double foul. foul between Mark Benitez and Ford Arau. Is it Arau or Benitez? Let's see. Referees have the unenviable task of trying to take control of this game. Yeah, it looks like double it's all Arau. Ford Arau is third and number two. So the ball will go Possession arrow in to LaSalle. Is it jump ball yet? Yeah, correct. That's okay, considered no. a jump ball. Well, the walls of Atene continue. And Itenorio has split from the foul line. Field goal numbers for them. They're 2 out of 10 of the field here in the third quarter. 244, Wesley Gonzalez. We talked about him a while ago. He doesn't look too happy. That concerned look. 43 34 is the score. Look at the rebounding wow. situation. Gonzalez done its job. Castro forces it up. A lot of time for the shot clock. Well, I think he was complaining that he ah, was stacked. Ah, he was trying to push that crowd. He said it now. He said it now. He said it now. He said it now. But the referees didn't see the tap. So he will be matched up against L.A. Tenorio. Membrere and Yo go face to face. The passing lanes have been covered well by La Salle. Absolutely. And, and more so now in the third quarter. They've really tightened things up. And they focus more on tightening well, things up on the inside. Uh, well, well, the inside well, well, the well, well, the they're having a harder time finding the cutters and finding their post bed. I think a warning was called on the bench of La Salle. Bench decorum. A warning in our Membrere against three. Nothing there. Again, good defense, and what a look by Jorwin! Oh! And Jorwin Gago with the slam-on, jam-on! 
And that all started with the no-look pass by Cholo Villanueva. And an impact play to get the lead back to 11, 45-34. That was a big morale booster to bring the momentum totally back to the LaSalle side as Ateneo was beginning to find a bit of a rhythm here in the third. Walang mapuntahan ito LaSalle. Seven seconds, Ateneo rather. Mugia will be forced to shoot this one with two seconds. He doesn't even realize it. He shoots it in the nick of time. But LaSalle takes it away from Cordaro. Yo sets it up to Gago again. Ooh. But look at the way LaSalle continues to run in unison, in sync. They know what to do, they know where to go. It looks like they're just weaving around the white shirts as if they were cones in practice. Look at this, no look. Jorwin Gago goes straight to the pipe and flushes it down for a Milo amazing fast break. Fourth personal foul on Baji Del Rosario. 117 to play. Gako revisits the 15th parallel. Situation now for Ateneo Boom. They've had a big struggle here in the third quarter. They've only scored six points. And that was with their main unit. Exactly. Now they need their rest. Now the second unit comes in, and this is where the problem lied in the last game. And they were outscored on the bench. 42 to 21, and here comes the bench. Back against Colonna, Chris Drew, Doug Kramer comes back in the ball game. Can they help produce? Can they pick up the intensity of Ateneo and find some offensive rhythm? We'll see. 10-0 in terms of the fast breaks, and look at this. Baji and Cholo. And a foul called on Cholo Villanueva. And the referee is taking control. Solo almost had it. That's why he was so yeah. frustrated. Dahil nautakan din niya si Maki Escalone. Maki is supposed to hit it off his legs. Solo do it. And Matras. Matras. You know, buti ka niya masalo sa paa niya. Well, here's that trap and then here's the dive. But she had position. On, oh, the follows on Solo going to the top of it. Wala naman eh. Wala naman. There was no extra motion. It was the referees trying to contain the other Lazar players who wanted to get into the action. Yeah. Who wanted to, I don't know, a tackle rush like a 100 meter dash. And I didn't see the, the, the pilot up because we were covered by the. Actually, they were already separated. They separated the referee boxed them out well. I wonder how well conditioned these referees are. They oh. really boxed out these players. I, I feel they're really conditioned because they, they, they run up and down. Yep. From the basics. Blocking up. Locate and block. <laughs> Locate the guy who's rushing towards the pilot. But G connects on his second free throw. And he will move out for the rookie, Ken Baracos. So more digging for Coach Sandy Gunnas Papachaka. Digging into his bench. Trying to find somebody to be a bit of a spark on either end of the floor. Future of Ateneo. You're looking at Ken Baracos, star of the juniors. Yo, attracts the double. They send it out to Casio, top of the circle. Gets it to go! Where was the D? Joseph Casio, wide open look. 49-35. Maracoso all the way, nothing there. He gets the ball back. But he did not establish position on the floor. And Ateneo is imploding right now at the tail end of the third quarter, TJ. And you made up here coming off the bench cold. Not only the no sweat and everything, but um, you're not yet into the game, in the mental game on the court. And he was there trying to force a shot. And the faces of the Athenians are way different from what we saw in the first half, DJ. Escalona spins, teardrops this one. It doesn't rim in. God smiling at LaSalle right now. Two again. Cholo sidestepping. Nothing there. The tap. Who will win it? Chuchu Kabato does. Three seconds. Well, big quarter for LaSalle. Boom. Huge quarter. Again, third quarter problems keep on hounding the 2002 champions as Sherwin Gakko and the rest of the De La Salle Green Archers in the lead by 14, 49, 35.
whether it will be the final 10 minutes of Ateneo for season 67 after leading most of the way in terms of the team standings as fourth quarter is underway. Welcome again, Philippines, to Studio 23's live coverage of Final Four action between Ateneo and La Salle. Here at the Big Dome, Boo Gonzalez, DJ Manoto, Chini Canivel, and Vicky Delas for ABS-CBN Sports. Bugia starts the fourth quarter with a short shot, and De La Salle regains possession. You know, just when Ateneo thought that in that third quarter they had a chance of breaking it to a single-digit barrier, Wala, bumalik na naman sa double-digit lead. It is now a 14-point lead for LaSalle. And sad to say, if they're going to play the way they played in third quarter, it's not going to do anything good for them because they only scored seven points in that third quarter, as you saw in their quarter scores. This is another category in which LaSalle dominated them in the third. Rebounding. LaSalle had so many rebounds in that third quarter. Even though they missed their shots, they got the boards. They established a double-digit lead. In spite of the, despite of the fact that Mac Cardona sat down towards the end of the third quarter and Joseph Yo still scoreless in this game. That's how deadly this team has become in season 67. And again, the stats that we've been looking out for this whole ball game inside points boom. 26 to 16 still in favor of LaSalle. Turnover points 17 to 9 in favor of LaSalle and fast break points 10 to 0 in favor of LaSalle. A startling stat. No fast break points whatsoever for the white shirts. And this is a team that is supposed to be the second best fast breaking team in the league, averaging 11 fast break points a ball game. Right now, none. Cardona comes back for Cholo Villanueva. And now it's a time where Yo and Cardona will play right. together for the very first time in this game. Well, they were in together in the third quarter, just a bit. Hey, you normally, yeah, normally Coach Franz likes to finish with them together. But this is a bit early, so he wants a strong finishing kick and wants to finish him off now. Cardona for three. Gets it to go! He sends that baby home. Mac Cardona with 21 points and two rebounds. For the game! What a huge offensive output so far Woo! for Mac Cardona in this game. Membrera shoots the three. Nothing there. Cardona scrambles for the loose ball. Sends it over to Yo, who commits the offensive foul. Well, he did not see JV Cash was wide open under the basket. Pakistani Joseph Yo, nakita na niya double team, and there was a wall. Tried to bar, tried through it. And Picked up a foul, their offensive foul on Joseph Hill as he got right in the face of Eddie Denorio. Let's look at this three-point shot brought to you by Smart Buddy. He strokes it and makes it and kicks the lead up to 52-35. And the chant of MVP here at the Big Dome is getting louder and louder by the minute. And an offensive foul called on Eddie Denorio. Coach Sandy's complaining that that foul was called on the fall of J.B. Gasha and not on the push. Let's look at our smart buddy instant replay. Look at this. Here's the bit of a nudge. What happened to Awag? When he fell to the floor, that's when the foul was called. And why Gold Sand is not happy with that. It was a late call. And it's the third personal on L.A. Tenorio. The Blue Eagles have not found the mark from the outside. And remember, Ateneo lives die sometimes most games with the three-point area at the half they were two out of six from beyond the arc in the third quarter i don't remember them getting a single three yo still no go here in the game Intal. and a double dribble infraction ball from jc and Tal. everything going wrong for today they're falling into the trap again we saw this happen to them in that knockout game last tuesday when things get tense, when things get tentative, and they are panicking already with so much time to go, they're Yo is zero out of five, just in case you wanted to know. He has been struggling in this game. There's three points to Both, and both two out of nine. not so great. But Lasal ahead by 17. But the thing with the two three points to Lasal is they've hit it big, you know, but then they're tiring. Yo breaks up the play. And it's fouled, and the chance to get the first two points for Joseph Yo from the free throw line. 
I don't know what they're talking about. Maybe Max said, hindi mo pinasa sa akin. Maybe Yo said, hindi naman tayo ng 17. Let me get my game going. Four points, or they got four fouls on LA Tenorio. And everything right now, TJ, pardon this comment, but it, it's pointing to a LaSalle victory. The yep. way they're playing, the things that are happening on the court, and now the frustrations that are creeping up the Ateneo squad. And now Coach Sandy pulls out LA Tenorio as he sits down on the bench, and I don't think he'll be sitting there for long, as long as they don't throw in the white towel yet. They're down by 18 points right now with 7.15 to go. Still enough time. It's mathematically possible, but they have to start right now. Put up the defensive pressure, get some steals, get some turnovers, get some fast break points here and there. And then we'll see when they bring it down to single digits and we'll see what can happen. Risky pass, JC and Tal sends it out to Doug Kramer. Membrere lines up the three, sends that one home. Still alive, still flickering for the Ateneans who are behind right now, 53, 38. Now LaSalle will play with time and score in mind. They know they're up by 15, they know time is on their hands. Watch them use more of the clock. And Yo says, I want to get my offense. <laughs> and this one, he finds the touch from around 19 feet on a tough jumper off a dribble. Well, the next habit was catching the wave, so to speak, while we are in a time, uh, well, we were at a timeout. As I said, LaSalle is smelling the second finals berth. FEU is sitting pretty and waiting for an opponent. And it will be either Adeneo or LaSalle, but Adeneo has to stay alive if they want a chance for that second final seat at the defense of LaSalle working. Although uh, the offense did not work in that sequence. These things they can afford with a 17 point lead and 6.28 to play. Well, it's been a miserable second half for Prateneo. The whole second half, they've only scored 10 points. Three out of 18 from the field, that is 17%. Wow. wow. Nine turnovers and they have committed 13 fouls. All in the last 14 minutes. Oh, look at that block, the emphatic denial of Jun Kabatu. But G shoots the three. Nothing there, and Mark Benitez comes away with a repossession. What we are seeing right now, here in the second half, DJ, is an offensive meltdown for Ateneo. They have just withered <laughs> into this uh, pickup of intensity of Kassan on both ends of the court. All goes to Ateneo. Your coach, Franz Pumarin, you still do not want to be complacent at, at this point as you look at T.Y. Tang. And let's update our uh, viewers with our Milo Wafer matchup for any time, anywhere. Energy, grab a bar now. Tang really couldn't find his touch from the outside today. And, you know, coach friends realized that if Ultimate gave, gave G.C. Casio more of the minutes, at the point, that's what he's doing. Double team off of T.Y. Tang in of the shots. And a good adjustment by Coach Franz Pumarin of making him come off now of the floor, bring him back to Amy Casho, and really have more patience of moving that ball around, even though they were baited into taking more outside shots. More from the Blue Eagles with Chini Cadivel. Chini. One stop and one point at a time. That is how Coach Sandy Aris Pocachaga wants his team to play in the fourth quarter. Coach Sandy reminded his team that they have to be able to help each other out by setting good screens for each other. He also assured the team, trust in me, we can do this. Back to you, Boom and TJ. Thank you very much, Chini Carivel. And if I don't get the chance to say it, not that I am predicting anything to Chini and to Vicky Deles, congratulations, you guys did a splendid job from courtside for season 67. No, I agree with the point of Coach Sandy that Kanina Panate Bidabang is walang movement away from the ball to Mateo. He said set screen, set screen, set screens. We saw it in the first half, it worked well for them. All of a sudden in the second half they had a bit of amnesia and forgot what worked well for them in the first half. You know, the lowest output of Ateneo this season was 51. That was not too long ago, uh, TJ. That happened 9-11, September 11th against FBU. That was like a couple of games ago. Yes. Remember, 
or they started to skid. Well, not really started to skid, pero parang yun na yung nagka-problema na sila coming into the final four. That was their first of back-to-back -back losses after barely beating NU. That's right. And losing against UB, yeah. 440 remaining. And what has been a physical battle between the arch rivals. This is the fourth meeting in season 67. Cardona, hesitation move, setting up Benitez. Oh, wow. What a pass again by Mac Cardona. Finding the door, slammed on him at the baseline. Look at, look at the body language of Ateneo going to their bench right now. Back here, the big dome, and some of the Ateneo fans have not given up the fight. I'm sure Coach Santiago Spokchaga is telling them to play with a, at least pride in the last four minutes of this ball game and try to close the gap between these two teams. And a foul is called. JV Castro trying to keep in step with LA Tenorio. Now they got to pick up the tempo. They want to come back with this game, of course, as Coach Sandy said earlier, one play at a time, one basket at a time. But their possessions will have to be quicker now. Bayani joining us here in the big dome. Looking so serious. That's a rarity too. <laughs> Tenorio stepping back. And Intal sticking it back at the four minute mark of this ball game. Trying to lead down to 16. The clock kept ticking there as nobody wanted to pick up the ball. And I don't know if the referees are going to rewind the clock. No, they're not. Exactly four minutes to play. And the last ditch stand now for Ateneo as they're pressing LaSalle. LaSalle is poised to get an eight-game winning streak on going into the finals. If LaSalle goes on to win, DJ, and FPU obviously standing by, uh -huh. in the championship, you have the two teams that peak in the second round. Correct. Except for UP. UP yeah, exactly. also had a super peak in the second round. Two of the three teams. Two of the three. Yep. <laughs> of course, you can't have three teams in the finals. So <laughs> I don't know whether that'll, that'll ever happen. <laughs> but then again, that's a, that's a dream for, you know, for sports. You, you get the best two teams talaga to make it to the finals. Because sometimes, especially in formats like these, maaring nasusunot yung mga magagaling na teams na pag makaswerte ang isang team na nasa rank 4 or rank 3 na mga dalawang magigang taro, ipasok ka agad, di ba? That's why a lot of other leagues, they really like the semifinals to be a long one. Like, like the NBA, it's the best of seven points in semifinals. So, walang sunutan niya ng... Uh, if, if, you, if you get in, yeah. it's really because you deserve it. That's why, of course, also the league has implemented this final form format where the guys are the one who are rewarded. Are rewarded. Are rewarded. You're twice to be a And unfortunately, Ateneo held on to that number one spot for a very long time, but lost it towards the end of the second round and dropped to number three. Ateneo is still fighting. There's a foul downstairs prior to the shot. LA telling everybody else to keep on kicking here. Well, now they're in the penalty. Now Intal will go to the foul line after picking that offensive rebound. Mark Benitez moves out to turn with Gapo. Steps back into the ball game. 57 41. And Coach Brand has done a marvelous job with rotating his men, specifically his big men, the way they kept coming in fresh, kept coming in to really battle it out inside against the big men of Ateneo. And you can see that indication in the boards, in the inside points. Ganda ng performance so far, the combination of big men and Coach Brand. I talked about Coach Brand's Kumara, and there were doubts about his ability to coach this team in the first round as they ended up at 4-3. and three. Tough four wins of that, but all those doubts cast aside now. Ateneo has made eight out of 14 free throws only. While Lasal has attempted 25 free throws to make 15. Cabrera from the outside. Off the back iron. Three minutes remaining. And a 15-point lead. And a foul ball away from the play. Coach Franz asking for a sportsman like but no. Remember he just That's like the fifth line of see Coach Franz put up that side. A sportsman like <laughs> every, Coach, every contact. Coach Franz come out and sits down Joseph Yo already who has struggled throughout yeah. this game. I know you believe it. Correct. I know you believe that he's given up on him. 
to try to find his rhythm. And he's thinking of the yeah. future too, I believe. Save him up for Thursday. <laughs> if Under Thursday, three minutes. Pull this off. Yes. Pull this off for the next three minutes. Cardona gives it up to Casho. Casho releases. Aranya tries to put it back. Nothing there. Crowd reacting. As every play, Membrere tries Man. again. This time he knocks it down. And puno puno po tayo for the main event of your Sunday showdown between Ateneo and La Salle. And we have a smart buddy three-point shot from Magnum Membrere, which cut the lead down to 7, 57, 45. Make that 12, 57, 45. Cardona now. Again, setting up Gago, and that has been the story yep. for Mac Cardona. And not only did Nassau break the press in that last instance, they broke it and attacked it right away and scored. Five assists for Mac Cardona, and his passing ability has made him a complete player and has made him a very dangerous and deadly player. Now, Coach Sandy already signaling, we got a foul, we got a foul. Try to trap him in the backcourt, try to get a steal. Look at this. Not get the foul. Nice assist, cool assist, assist brought to you by Nescafe Ice. Do the move. Vital giving it back to Membrere from way out. Oh man! One gets set to go. Down to 11. Just under two minutes. 59 48. That's number four on JC Vital. Wala pa sa penalty ang Ateneo? Or do they? Shoot now. They are in the penalty. More personal, as you mentioned. Stubborn at the end of the squad. Well, E.Y. Tan being sent to the scorer's table. As you see the sea of green. Well, German Gago, a guy who's averaging 54% from the foul line this season. Today he is three out of six. Oh, that three out of seven. The sea of blue on the other side. And a few greens here and there. Alam mo naman, That's behind the bench of the sun. Oh, tsaka alam mo naman, meron mga ibang nasisingit-singit. All right. Sa mga humingin ang tingkat kung ano yung magnitin. <laughs> when he gets here, he realizes, oh no! Talit Cardona! Boy! <laughs> and they're not done. Cardona still talking to JC. Membrere, nowhere to go. Intal back to Membrere. That's a tough one. Oop. Left his feet. I don't know why they just kept looking for Magnum. And he was also wanting to get a big shot off. They just kept going back to Magnum because he hit the last two three pointers for them. Matt Cardona chatting with Brad Kovarin right now. <laughs> Look at that seat. Oh, we only had it on our cameras. All right. Shaking the, the shaved head of Macron. Rubbing it was more like it. Rubbing it. <laughs> I don't know, genie with the magic lamp. 136 to play here in the fourth and final quarter. And JB Castro putting the finishing touches. The dejected Ateneo crowd. Stunned. And in the middle of that, four half naked guys with DLSU <laughs> on their bodies. Raving. Yeah, the Ateneo side of this. That's actually the Metro halfway. Oh, so they could have gone. Lasal has made the finals since uh, 98 until 2000. Make that. Oh, that's right. Uh, with French Milan, and I'm talking about Coach French Milan. 1998 to 2002, they won all the titles from 98 to 2001. As Pajita Rosario moves out of this ball game. We have a timeout. Stay glued and enjoy your Nescafe 3 and 1. Pass it up. It's a break time. But it's not a timeout. So it's just five fouls oh, on Pachita yeah. Rosario. Now, Sandy Eres Pacochaga, as you look at this, is Brad Spumarin. <laughs> on the screens. <laughs> you know, Sandy Eres Pacochaga, no matter what you say, in the second round, I mean, I think he has exceeded a lot of expectations of a lot of people in season 67. Well, he's had his struggles, you know. Some people are divided, boom. Yes. Some, but I'm going to argue that Ateneo peaked too early. 
They okay. had a seven zero start, and then they had a three and four second round. Some people still argue, did they ever peak? Because the seven and zero, but now we did the mga panalo that come from behind. That's that right. They weren't playing like a well-oiled machine, as you see, Mano and Dito from behind them. He's not here to scout, mind you. He's here to root for yeah. his alma mater. Remember, Ateneo was not projected to be in the top two prior to season 67. It was no. more a talk between MPU and Nasal Talaga. And boy, eventually when it all piled, boiled down in the final analysis, it is the talk the prior to the start of the season that pushed through here because MPU and Nasal might end up duking it out for the championship for season 67. Nobody really would have ever thought that Nasal would make that big of a run yes. in the second, the second round and still get a twice speed advantage. But I mean, I expect that they'll bounce back from a, from a miserable 4 and 3 first round. But they not all the thought, way, not they, that way. yeah, and they all thought, Hangang final of four lang, na makapasok sila as third or fourth. Nobody ever thought the Wildest Dreams that they'd make it all the way to the second spot. They even had a chance to get the number one spot, right? For a time. Yeah. There was a possibility. There was a possibility. Yeah. The curtains are slowly falling on the campaign of Ateneo for season 67. And the biggest heartbreak of the year for the guys in blue would be the losing, yes. losing Larry Punasher to the ACL injury. Many have pointed out time and again, not just the points, not just the rebounds, not just the defense that Larry Punisher can give you, but the experience, the leadership, which is something that nobody really was able to step into and fill that role or fill that gap of having a leader on the floor. As you look at the, well, the faces of Ateneo, there's a thousand words. Mebrere steps in, Intal fakes, draws the foul from Jerwin Gago, and Kapatu tells him, what a foul. 59 seconds before the sea of green behind us, TJ, will burst into a celebration. Well, they've already been bursting all this game long, They're cheering, but celebrating they just might be doing as he did foul by Jerwin Gago. Caught on our Smart Buddy instant replay. And I'm there's there's something that these two teams have in common this season is they have great win streaks. Ateneo had a seven game win streak, Nasal had a, has an eight game win streak, but there are glaring differences. This eight game win streak of Nasal, they have demolished their opponents. I don't have the exact numbers, but I think they would have averaged winning margin of at least eight or nine points and above. A lot of them in also the, in do double digits. In the, in the six game winning streak, they, have, they uh, beat their opponents by an average of 11 points. Good. The last two, you don't do the math. Correct. They won 82-69 the last time out, and today, they're just put them so far. Yeah. 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 Right spot for Ateneo, though, they are, as Coach Coy Banal is getting ready now He's for La Salle. Is he sitting on the floor? Yes. He told me to me, he's going to be show for Ateneo now surpasses the 51-point output that they had against the MPU. So they don't match their lowest output. That's the only bright spot that we see as fouls are being committed here. Marco Mebrere fouling Mac Cardona, who started off very well and pretty much made a statement from the very start. He just came to play a super ball game today. Double A game. And very well focused. Normally, kapag nagkakainitan, you see Makula na a part of it. Siya pa yung umaawat, siya pa yung sasabi na tumahimik na kayo to his teammates. It's amazing the way you saw his maturity in his leadership today. Nakakagulat. And, and that is an amazing improvement from last year physically, mentally, in terms of his basketball, the assist department, and you know, the chant of MVP behind us. Said he is leading the league before this game, 15.3 points a game, and he has played splendid defense too. You pay oh, yes. you making him such a complete player right now at this he's one stage. Of the, he's one of the many green shirts that Coach Franz has thrown at LA Tenorio and trying to out him to no end. 
And looking at Denorius' points, he has 11 points in this ball game. Not so bad for this uh, game for any Denorio. Although last game he did have 22 points, so obviously today he tried to focus much more on getting his teammates more involved in the ball game. Uh, unfortunately, as we kept saying in the second half, it was another third quarter meltdown by the White Shirts. He's assisting his defense. You know, Macardona is the kind of guy. It's like, again, it's when you go, you know, to the great players, they they like defending the number one offensive option of the, of the opposing camp. They see, they see it challenge. as a major challenge to their capabilities as a defender. So the celebration is upon us here with the De La Salle Green Archers. Their eighth straight win, DJ, since August 19th. Eighth straight was the last one? Right. I mean, today would be eight. Yeah. Eight, right. Since August 19th, they have been undefeated. And now, everybody behind us. Nakatayo na, DJ. Tayo na lang, hindi nakatayo na. We're the smarter ones who want to use our chairs. But then again, these guys loving it. Oh, yeah. They don't care about the chairs. Even though it's nice and soft and cushiony here at the Araneta. You know what would be a nice statement? Get Macarbona out of the game right now. <laughs> and let him sit down. Get that applause. I think, I think he's gesturing to Coach France to replace him. But it would be a good tribute. Why would they fall out But it would be a good tribute, though, to, yeah. to the performance today of Macarbona. You know how coaches love to do that. Yes. Well, looks like this man has once again led his team back to the finals. He has not lost the touch. As uh, some might have suspected. Another foul committed by Anatinia. They're going to pull out Macarton in this fight. Solo Villanueva dispatched now from the bench. And Cardona moves out to the cheers, cheers. Of the De La Salle community here at the Big Dome. And that, that is a gesture from a coach. There you go. That hug says it all. And the more, forget the young picture there. You know the talk, even going back to last year. Ah, yes. He, I remember. I remember. he was even suspended by La Salle. That's so right. Man. In a game against Adams, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. At the Blue Eagle Gym. I did that game. And Jun Cabato points to his team. The cherry on the ice cream, so to speak. Lasal goes back to the finals and will beat another hot team, another solid team, and another veteran team in FDU. They will have their work cut out for them, TJ, especially only having one day's rest. And a team that has also been peaking, a team that has the lead leader in the MVP statistical race, Byron Santos. And then the number one defensive team of the league. Yes. Tone and Yo will go back to the finals. Isn't it Thursday? I think it will start on Thursday. Thursday, yes. Well, we'll give you the schedule as we give you the wrap up in a bit. In the meantime, the La Salle will. The La Salle uh, will look for its seventh title here in the UAAP. We're looking at the future for today right now on the floor, guys. Ascolona, Cristiu, Barajosa. Uchiko, Barbosa, sorry, Uchiko and Japheth Aguilar. Give these guys a year or two and they will be solid, solid contributors for the Blue Eagles. Okay, we have confirmed that the first game between FEU and Lasalle will be on Thursday, 4 p.m. at Cardona. Yes, you deserve that five seconds of close-up from the camera back. And the two MVP contenders will uh, not guard each other, but will go at it. Arwin Santos and Macarbona. Animal La Salle prevailing over one big fight today. 12.8 seconds away. I'm sure I won't be able to hear anything again when the buzzer sounds. Duri Escueta will triple the time away. Again. Again, David Castro also from San Pedro, Franz Pumare, and San Diego's Pocachaga. I'm sure France has congratulatory words for the youthful coach, San Diego's Pocachaga. 
Gia Padilla also there. The celebration begins, but I will have to say it will be a short-lived celebration because on Thursday, they get back to business against FDU. At the end of this highly physical and emotional match, the LSU winning over ADMU today here at the main event of your Sunday showdown and your Milo Energy player of the game. Macardona, 8 out of 11 from the field, 7 out of 8 from the free throw line. One foul, three steals, five assists, and the points. And the winning energy lives on for your Milo Energy player of the game. G. Del Rosario, I believe, very emotional right now with Coach Sandy Aras Pakuchaga, trying to pacify him or trying to calm him down. Good job saying. Sandy Aras Pakuchaga is saying to Baji. In the meantime, our Samsung best play is this throwdown, courtesy of Derwin Gakwa, the play brought to you by D410 slide up to a new dimension. That was just one of the great plays that we had in this game between Ateneo de Manila University and the De La Salle Green Archers. And you'll only catch that here on Studio 23. And that's it for us. We have my partner, DJ Manotok, Chini Canivel, Mickey Delas, Derek Abbott Ramos, I'm Boom Gonzalez. And this has been another ABS-CBN sports presentation. La Salle goes to the finals and meets FEU for the 67th season of the UAAP on Studio 23. Kabarkada mo.